Fatalisme, uh, go ahead, I mean, uh, rend les gens plus fatalistes uh, que, que ça, <laughs> je sais pas, <laughs> non, je sais pas, bah, euh, vous pensez que l'un de notre, est-ce que vous pensez que l'un de nos problèmes du tout, c'est que c'est justement le fatalisme, well, uh, c'est que le problème il est ailleurs. Je sais pas, je dois regarder le dictionnaire sur la définition du fatalisme. Généralement, c'est comme ça que j'agis avec les mots. Je dirais que Hack a pris ma bord. Il y a d'autres mots qui me dérangent. La procrastination, par exemple, dont Wissem était en train de parler. That it's not saying that bad things aren't happening, but recognizing what is still going on that's all right in life. And sometimes it feels a little ridiculous, but but yeah, to, to focus on the positive, because even if it does seem silly, sometimes that'll make you laugh at yourself. And then that's at least a step in the right direction. So that's improving it a little bit. Do it, do it, space. Just quit. Just quit. I don't want to see you anymore. Uh... Just leave me alone. I'm gonna find my solutions. I'm gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to see you. I don't want to speak with you. I, yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna say. Total rejection. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not a religious person, but I do believe in a sense that there's a, a higher power, a sort of deity or a god. Um, if fatalism was in front of me, I, I do think I will subscribe to some aspects of fatalism and not all. The reason being is that. Uh, Is there such a thing as a predetermined destiny? I would say not necessarily so, but I certainly think that we can make choices that make it seem as though our destiny is predetermined. So I don't think destiny is predetermined. I think we've often we're confronted with binary choices, either left or right, yes or no. And I think based on these binary choices, we make decisions and those decisions lead us to certain circumstances and outcomes. And we say, well, maybe it is what it is. Parce qu'ils ont su me challenger. Je suis une personne qui travaille beaucoup avec les challenges. J'ai toujours parlé en français euh, dans mes formations, les public speaking que je donne. La première fois que je le fais en anglais. Donc euh, j'ai senti un petit challenge et j'ai décidé de le relever. I got nominated by my students actually. Yeah, some of my students thought, I guess they thought I was interesting, might have something good to share. So they nominated me and yeah, I really appreciated it. So I accepted. So yeah. First of all, uh, the students that have been organizing this uh, have been getting in touch with me and they, um, they proposed to me that. And they are wonderful, they are doing a great job. Second, it's the subject which is very interesting, beyond expectations, about innovation, it's about creativity, and I'm working a lot on that. Uh, my talk was about poverty as well, so if you think about mix, you know, these items, poverty, creativity, and innovation. My expectations are very self-serving, and so as I was focusing on the concept of me, 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 and I, 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 I was also telling myself my own personal message that I need to... I need to do more and I so in terms of answering the question as to why I've chosen to give my voice to this it was a way for me to recognize that I need to do more as an individual and that I am not doing enough and so I was in essence giving myself a pet talk and going back to the whole fatalist question I think it was me trying to legitimize a new journey in my life and saying well okay I feel like I need to do more and so I think I was conceding that I had failed Um, within my own expectations because I tend to define expectations of, as success and so it was more a message to myself I think um, than to anyone else and that's why I've chosen to give to give my voice 
uh, to the TEDx. Thank you.